they're going to tell you. And without further ado, I'm going to kick it back to Belinda. She's going to kick this off. Let's get the drinks ready, get the booze flowing. Yay! So if anybody's been admiring this gorgeous violet boudoir situation, it's not a virtual background. It is the real thing. And I'm going to toss it to Frankie Marshall, who's one of my favorite and many insiders' favorite bartender on earth. So I worked with her at the Monkey Bar in New York City. Uh, and then she taught me how to shake. I mean, <laughs> I got a little private shake lesson. Not that my shake is that great, but I didn't listen maybe as much as I should have, but she's been at the Clover Club. You opened the monkey bar with us and she's been just, she's had such an illustrious career. And now she has a huge virtual career too, doing things with famous people like Dale DeGroff and doing Quibi videos and all kinds of stuff. So Frankie, can we get our first drink going? And then will you um, tell us a little bit about Pinot de Charente? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you, Belinda, for having me here. Thank you to everyone. This is so exciting. Fair from downtown Brooklyn. So yes, we're going to get the drink started right off, and then I'll talk a little bit about, about Pinot. Um, what I wanted to do, the reason why I wanted to feature Pinot is because it is, when we think about brunch, we think about uh, low ABV, and that's exactly what Pinot is, 17% alcohol by volume. So for those of us who actually want to have an evening after brunch, I think this is a good, a good thing. So first of all, actually, if, is anyone making the drink along? Because if you are, what I'd like you to do first is get your garnishes ready. Um, I've, I've pre-cut some grapefruit twists here and laid out my thyme. So uh, we just want to do that first so we can get those into the cocktail as quickly as possible. Like I have they sage flowers, Frankie. Is that okay? Sorry? Sage flowers. Aren't they cute? Oh, you know what? You are prescient. Absolutely. Sage is great. Sage is wonderful. I can't see them. Let me fake find you. Anyway, um, so first of all, I just have some ice here, my little ice bowl. So we're going to put some right into my wine glass. And by the way, you can make this cocktail. I'm choosing a wine glass because I figure you all have those. <laughs> you could also make this in a rocks glass if you wanted to, or a fancy stem glass, but let's go wine glass right now. So you can put your ice right in there. And so I have this ice and I made in the freezer. You can do this yourself. You can just like fill up a little container like this. You get a solid block that won't come out now, but you get the idea. We went from this to this. So, all right, I'm gonna put a little bit more ice. Oh, wow, Frankie, did you carve your own ice at home? Yes, darling, of course. Oh, that's amazing. I yeah, so I, and actually if pieces are too big, you just get out your little ice pick you get out your little ice pick that all of us have? <laughs> you know, everyone's got to have one. You can I'm sure that right Happy now. Cabbage can put together a kit for this. <laughs> right. yeah. So, all right. So I have, I'm not going to fill this up too much uh, more right now. So I take my little Japanese jigger that I actually bought in Japan. They're not any cheaper there, by the way, I wish. Um, so we're going to do- Pinot, you're pouring in the Pinot first, right? Pouring in the Pinot first. And- I'm doing two ounces. I'm going to bring this down here because I'm, aha, uh -huh. right? So yes, two ounces of, oh, you have the Norman de Merci. Yes, he's, all right, so yeah, two ounces of the PDC. I'm going to top that because I didn't get quite to the top of my jigger. All right, we've got two ounces and then I'm going to give a little integration stir because I want to get this dilution going just a little bit. So just a little integration stir like that. And then we are going to get our tonic. Now today, uh, it always, we always need good quality, good quality products, right? So I'm using the London Essence. Uh, to, this is actually grapefruit and rosemary, grapefruit and rosemary. Uh, I really like Fever Tree Indian Tonic as well, which works really, ah, that sound, that sound. So we are going to put in an ounce and a half of tonic. And I just want to take this opportunity to say that, you know, recipes are guidelines. Um, you don't have to follow this uh, strict you know, um, this strict recipe, but these are the proportions that I like. And this PNT, don't know if I mentioned, this is my play on a GNT or a gin and tonic. So, you know, with gin and tonics, you usually have the glass filled all the way up. I don't want that here. So resist the temptation at first, please, to fill the glass all the way up. Just do it like this for now. Give one more stir just to integrate, because again, we want our first sip to be the whole cocktail and not just whatever you just threw on top. So if you'd like, you can fill this up just a little bit more with uh, a little bit more ice. So here we go to just a little, again, just- Oh, it smells so good, Frankie. Yum. 
don't try this at home. I don't want to be responsible for the, the ice pick issues. But all right, so just one more little piece of ice. Now we're going to get our garnish in there. We're going to get our thyme. It's time for thyme. So we just put that just nicely in there if we can. Looks beautiful. And of course, I've washed my hands before I started, right? Always, first thing I do behind, when I get behind the bar, wash those hands. And then we're going for, this one looks good. So we want to express the grapefruit. For those of you who haven't expressed before, we want the side, the outside, not the pith side. So you're going to hold this above your, your drink. The idea is we're trying to express the oils into the cocktail. Now, the closer you get, the more aroma you're going to have. So I like to do it from a little bit above. I wonder if you can see that. Yeah, we can see yeah, it. Looks good. Yeah, so, and then we're just going to make it sexy. <laughs> <laughs> and put this in here in a nice way. Uh, yeah. And then we'll stay up, get up there. Well, anyway, you get the idea. So yeah, here we have our P and T. Yum. Yes. So now we can go ahead and taste that if you'd like. Let me take these off. Yes. All right. So Salute, everyone. Yum. Salute. So Salute. whatever you're drinking, cheers. We mm -hmm. love seeing you and hanging out with you today and drinking with you today. That is delicious, Miss Frankie. That is so delicious. So Frankie, is this a classic then drink in Cognac or the region in France where Pinot is from? Well, yeah, you will find people drinking a lot of cognac and tonic and absolutely pinot and tonic. Again, the, the difference here is, you know, the proportions. Um, my ratios are different. And again, it because I want to taste the pinot, I don't want it to be like a G&T where you're talking about 40% ABV. It can afford, you can afford to fill it up and, you know, you'll still taste the 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 spirit but pinot is not a spirit um and let me just segue into what pinot actually is so, uh -oh. nobody that, right nobody heard that <laughs> oh no, what happened nothing happened fine <laughs> well, I, well i knew something was gonna go down anyway. new york spaces we get it new york Where's spaces when i need them somebody bar back pick that up <laughs> um so um yeah so pinot de Chiron is a vin de liqueur so it actually is a fortified wine. So it's made of three quarters uh, grape, fresh, yes, there we go. Fresh pressed grape, grape juice, grape must, and then uh, one quarter cognac eau de vie. Um, it's got an AOC, it has to come from the cognac region of France. So there's uh, many styles. I'm using here a vieux, which is five years old. There's a younger, there's young Pinot, they come in white, red and rosé. You don't see the red and rosé as much, but they're definitely out there. Um, Frankie, it's also, it's kind of like Lille, but I mean, it's a lot more sophisticated, right? Like, it seems like maybe there's some barrel aging and other stuff going on. Definitely, definitely barrel aging. I mean, there's a minimum age um, for the white, for the young white, it's 18 months and 12 in barrel. So yeah, you'll absolutely get some, some depth and complexity from the Pinot. And one thing I want to mention is they, uh, they often put on the label, um, dessert wine, and I think that that's doing a disservice to the cocktail, I mean, to the, um, to the Vendée de Liqueur, because it's so much more than that. Um, it's great as an aperitif, as we see here. It's great as a food accompaniment, and I encourage you to actually taste this Pinot along with um, everything that we're eating today. Uh, You're right, it says dessert wine. That's so weird. Yeah, I mean, you know, and again, it doesn't belong at the back of the menu. You know, I always tell people, um, you know, again, you can start with it, right? You can have it on its own. That's how they have it in France, actually. Um, you can have, with, it goes great with melon, it goes great with cheeses, and it goes just really well with so many other things. And while I am speaking, I am going to start the second cocktail. If anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and... Ms. Frankie, uh, we do have one question for you okay. from Al G. Al G, uh, ask away. Oh. Oh, Where are you, girl? I put it in the chat. Um, I was just wondering how you felt about um, flaming the orange peel or grapefruit peel or whatever it is, because I've heard a couple of different things over the years about it being a good idea and a bad idea. Yeah, a lot of people think are now thinking it's a bad idea because you're getting basically all this like sulfur coming off a match. First of all, if I were going to do it, I'd do it with a match and definitely not a lighter because then you're getting a butane. Um, so people are against it. And sometimes it actually leaves, if you don't do it properly, it will leave a black mark, um, you know, on your, on your cocktail. So I would say if you're going to do it, you practice and, you know, do it properly so that you're doing it across 
you're not doing it right into your glass. You're doing it across the top of the glass. And I wish I don't have any matches right now or else I'd show you. Um, but oh, one thing I would show is that when you do it, I cut this disc earlier because if you don't want that big piece of grapefruit twist in your cocktail, these are the best things to flame with. You cut a thick disc. Um, don't try to flame with a twist like this. Don't do this. Cut a thick disc like that because you're going to get more oils out of this. So I'll leave it up to you, but cut your thick disc because then, you know, there's nothing worse than trying to express and you get the little, you don't get the, because you want the, right? You want the full flame. You want drama, darlings. We want drama. Flamethrower. We love flamethrower. Yes. 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 <laughs> so um, so the you, second drink that you have, um, the second recipe you gave us, Frankie? Yes. Is, so this is the Pinot Fino, which, um, so Pinot and just as it, just as we, uh, just as the name says, Fino Sherry. I know some of you don't like uh, Wait, sherry. Wait, do we build this one in a mixing glass? This one we do in a mixing glass, right? Yes, yes. You get your mixing glass out. I already have my my um, little cocktail glass chilling. That's a little ice in there. So hopefully that's chilled already. <clears throat> and then get your mixing glass. So I've already put in a half ounce of the Fino Sherry. And then I'm going to put in the one and a half of the Pinot. And again, if you wanted to scale this drink up, it's not a great sound. I yeah. love that. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to do, um, if you wanted to scale this drink up, you could do two to one. So two parts Pinot to um, kind of one part of the Fino, but I would say, let's start here. So did I say half of this? I meant three quarters. So one and a half, three quarter. And Fino Sherry, as we know, Sherry, I'm Bel I'm Belinda Chang, I know you hate Sherry, but so this is <laughs> Fino, fortified wine, um, uh, fortified to about 15% uh, ABV. So here we've got 17%, 15%, low ABV, we're going to be okay tonight. And yeah, so now this drink is going to get topped with olive oil. So you might think, don't want oil on my drink. Why? It's for mouthfeel. It's for aroma. If you're not into the olive oil, you can use an olive. If you, I'm going to use a dropper. If you don't have a dropper, you can use um, a metal spoon like the ones that I just droppered onto the floor there. So you can use that. You can just dip that into your olive oil gauze and you know um, just drop on top. So let's. Is everybody with me? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get the ice in there. All right. So now I, I'm going to use the cloudy pieces to mix with. So that's our little trick, right? We save the perfectly clear piece pieces to put in our cocktail, but we can mix with the cloudy ones if we want. And if you want, we can break this ice up a little bit more because more surface area, then we'll have more dilution a little faster, right? So it depends on how quickly you want to make this drink. So here we go, and we get to put our spoon in, and we stir. By the way, this mixing glass I got from the Czech Republic as a gift. So this is actually Czech um, glass, which is exciting. Check, check, check one. Yes. <laughs> so you, oh, you know, you've got to, you've got to, you know, it's interactive. Absolutely. All right. So mixing this. Now I'm going to put that aside and get my glass ready and throw out this ice here. All right, so we have our beautiful little cube ready for action. And anybody have any questions? No, it's delicious. Oh, you're so, <laughs> you're ahead of me. Okay, so I am gonna do. I I do have to get my uh, my little strainer. Let me find out. Let me find it. Excuse me, one second. All right. Okay, it's gone. It's gone. So we're going to improvise. Normally, I'd have a strainer. That that's right. Just like Bailey's doing there. Oh, Bailey! Oh. Nice job. Yeah. No, I should have had a skunk strainer, a skunk sure. strainer. But tell you what we're going to do. We are going to just pretend this is a strainer. All right. So straining, straining, straining every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. Now I'm going to put this aside and get ready for the oil. So again, you have to be careful with these because the oil can fall off pretty quickly. So I'm just going to do a one, two, three drops and show you what that looks like. Always start with fewer. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can, well, probably it not. It made really cool, like, you know, glycerin-y little drops. Exactly. So beautiful. 
Exactly. And you can also express a little lemon twist if you'd like. But let me just see what, if, if it turned out okay. I think it's delicious. It smells fantastic. <laughs> I just the aroma coming off it. Darling. I can't complain about that. I'm not <laughs> mad at it. So I'm pretty happy about it. We have a few yeah. questions for you, Ms. Frankie, if you have a, if you have a second here. Uh, so Valerie Lomas has a question. We're going to put you on spotlight right now. Valerie, coming to us from New York City. Oh. Hi, my screen looks crazy, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to put there. But um, I just had a question about the ice cubes. I think you've kind of mentioned it earlier, but um, can you just tell a little bit, a, a little bit more about like the ice cubes and how you got them into the smaller pieces? Yeah, as I said, so I put them in a. Um, I just froze. A, actually, here it is: a piece of ice like this. So it's easy to make in a court, you know, kind of a court container. So it starts off like that. And then I just take the ice and then I broke it down with my ice pick. But you can use, um, like, again, please don't try this at home. I don't want to be responsible. As a matter of fact, the first time I started using ice pick, I would walk, go home from work with stigmata because I was cutting my hand all the time. So be careful. So yeah, but you can take, actually, a spoon would work if you've got the right type of heavy spoon or even this end of a spoon will work if you do it long and hard enough. Well, there you go. So, you know, I know. It's, so, yeah, you can. Does, Frankie, does the type of water matter? I mean, does it have to be like, is, can you use just faucet water? Are we looking, talking purified water? Well, you know, I mean, this is this is downtown Brooklyn. We just have to do deal with what we have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not fancy. No, okay, no. You got it. Use, of course, if you use filtered water, that would be, it's really up to you. I use actually hot water from the tap, and then you let it sit for a few minutes, right? So then the bubbles dissipate. So then you actually put in some clear water. Because you know the, what the water looks like out of the faucet. It's pretty cloudy. So just let it sit and put it in, put it in the freezer. And, you know, and then eventually cover it, leave it uncovered for, for a while. And then depending on what else is in your freezer. And if you have a deep freeze, and actually, if you wanted to make, if you wanted to make big ice blocks, you can get one of those, um, what are those coolers? You know, what are the, what's the brand? Like, uh, anyway, one of those big Coleman coolers. I mean, that, igloos. Igloos, yes. <laughs> Use it at Monteverde. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah, put that, that in the That disembodied voice is Sarah Grunberg. <laughs> yeah, so well, we have one more question for you, Ms. Frankie. Uh, yes. Coming from Jessica Burson, if we can spotlight her really quick. Jessica, where are you? I'm in Chicago. Yay! Yay. I'm so excited you're here. Yay. <laughs> she doesn't okay. want to show herself, so we'll let her ask her What's question. What's your question, Jessica? Okay. <laughs> and I'll get myself on in a sec. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I'm in the darkness. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Question for Frankie. Ooh, there we go. Yay. Um, so I was curious about how much we should think about investing in a home bar equipment. And because um, my home stuff is not the best quality. So I, I didn't know if that was like stuff we could get away with on the cheap or if we should really plan on investing on, in home equipment. Do you make a lot of drinks at home? Not complicated drinks, but I would like to eventually. Yeah. I think, um, you know, it's funny watching these Zooms. There's a lot of bartenders out there who have no equipment at home, which is interesting. <laughs> I, I think um, it's really, it's one of those things where it can kind of go either way. If you want to, you know, definitely have, if you're having people over, then I think it's great to, you know, have the right equipment to make great cocktails with. Um, for your, as, you, as you saw, I literally just used my you know my tongs as a strainer i mean you can always improvise what i think is really important to have is a good jigger to okay. measure and i'll be honest with you a lot of these jiggers don't have equal uh, correct measurements yeah. um, you know i've compared the ones i have and they're all slightly different um but yeah having a great jigger to measure out properly is key um if you're going to stir cocktails having a good spoon um i think is really um can be really helpful and um and the proper, I, well, if you're going to shake cocktails and yeah, having a proper shaker set, I like um, small and large tins. I don't do glass. A lot of people do like a mixing glass with tin and that's just really heavy. Um, so it's easier, I find, to do tin on tin. So I think if you invest in, it's like a wardrobe, you know, you've got to invest in those key pieces <laughs> that will carry you through, you know what I mean? And then you can kind of improvise all the rest. 
but Frankie, I great. feel like we could sit and listen to you all day. Maybe you should consider Zoom classes. I mean, you've won so many competitions and you're such an amazing camera presence that maybe you should just give us, you know, a class schedule we can sign off and <laughs> well, I would definitely I Something to think about. Thank you. I appreciate that. And just quickly, speaking of classes, I am giving a Pinot de Chirons, um 101 this coming Wednesday. It's going to be on a, a Facebook Live on the Portland Cocktail Week website. And there will be a quiz, and 10 lucky winners can win four bottles of PEDC, Pinot, including this one. But it'll be a full one. So if you'd like, <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Thank Frankie. You. Everyone at home, yeah, remember to be following you. along with your bingo card as well. If you made a cocktail, show us. If you got the bottle, show us and follow along with that so you can win yes. a fabulous prize from Belinda. And yes. Matt, we also shared um, Frankie's Venmo because like all of us who are in events and restaurants and those kinds of businesses, we're all furloughed and laid off. So, you know, I didn't charge you corkage. I see a lot of you brought your own wine to brunch today. So please Venmo Frankie to show your support and also our gratitude for her coming and teaching us so much today. And if you're following along on bingo and you made that drink with Frankie, you can cross that off and maybe win a couple magnums to drink with us next week. But Matt, I think we have another guest. Absolutely. Yeah. We do. Let's get into the food portion of today, the crepes. First up, Michelle Geyer coming in from Minnesota. Thank you so much for being here, Michelle. You're 10 times James Beard Award nominee. Obviously, I think you know a little bit about making some delicious pastries. <laughs> So can you just walk us through about what you're going to be making today and uh, let's get this show on the road. Hi guys, thanks. I'm so excited to be here in Belinda. Thank you so much for phoning me up and calling me and I'm super excited to make this crepe galette. This is something we used to make at the Salty Tart every day that was on the menu. It's super easy and to have crepes around, you can do so many fun things with. You can go savory, you can go sweet. So I thought we'd start by making the crepe batter, okay? Oh, thank you. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Girl. cheers, Michelle. Girl. Also, for everyone planning on making all the crepes, you can use Michelle's batter for Sarah's crepe, the crespelle, at the end of the food portion. So make sure to save a little bit for that portion, too. Okay. So here we go. I love to make crepe batter in a blender because it's so easy. It's just one container, one mix, and you're done. So I have my eggs, my, my milk, my water, my flour, my salt, and then I also have my butter warming up over here. It's also gonna be the same pan that I'm making my crepes in, so I'm kind of already seasoning my crepe pan so that it's ready to go. So should the pan be heated right now, Michelle? What temperature should the pan be? Oh, um, I would have it on medium. You can melt your butter in the same pan that you're making your crepes in. Perfect. Does that help? Yeah. Absolutely. You know that I'm going to be FaceTiming you now whenever I make Yes, this. I would love that. I would love nothing more. Than <laughs> I need a little handhold. I need a little help. <laughs> I got you. I got you, girl. Okay, so in the blender, my eggs, my flour, my salt, my sugar, because I always like salt and sweet. I got my water and my milk. Now I'm just going to give it a couple pulses to get it going. and hold the lid on tight. No one needs an exit. And I'm just kind of pulsing to get it all together. So now that I have my butter melted, I'm gonna add that to the top. Who doesn't love a crepe? I love to keep these crepes. Sometimes I keep the crepe batter in the oven, or excuse me, in the oven, in the fridge so my kids can make crepes or I have all the crepes ready to go so that my kids can make crepes whenever they want them. Okay, so that's so interesting. So how long in advance can you make the crepe batter? Like how long will it be okay? I think, three, I think three or four days. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So a handy dandy little spatula. I'm just going to make sure that there is no, um, A couple more blends. And we're good to go. Done. Gorgeous. I'm gonna go over to my saute pan 
and start making crepes. And Michelle, so we could have done that like in a ninja too. We could have done it in a lot of different. Absolutely. Yeah. That's Absolutely. How many crepes will that make? Will that amount of batter make? Let's see. So I made these this morning. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half, I would say, because we ate one this morning. <laughs> And your first one is always a mess up. So, so I'm gonna turn my heat on to medium heat. I'm using the same pan that I melted my butter in. So it's kind of seasoned, it's ready to go. I'm gonna just let this warm up just a little bit. So I like to make crepes that are one to two ounces, but depending on how big your crepe pan is, is how big and how much batter you'll put in. So for a larger saute pan like this, it almost is three ounces. But I got this like tiny little dancer and she probably only needs like two ounces. So what you wanna do is make sure your pan gets warm enough and hot enough that the batter immediately starts to seize and starts cooking. And sometimes the first one is your messed up one and that's the one I can <laughs> taste and eat. So that I know that it has the right amount of seasoning. Uh, Wait, that doesn't probably, follow for children too. The first one, I'm the first one. I don't know if any of you guys yes, are the first one. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start this. So I'm gonna pour in a little batter. Okay. And all I'm gonna do is swirl around my pan. until all the batter is kind of soaked up. Back on the Soaked up? What's soaking it? Does that look okay? <laughs> yes, that looks great, Belinda. Thank you. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, look at you. You're doing great. <laughs> you got the whole wrist yes, action down, dude. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so then we're going to let it start to set up yeah. On the sides, then I'm going to use my offset spatula. And I use my two hands, and I'm going to flip it over. Oh, that's a scary part. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Um, there are two numbers. So, like, I have a, there, there's the number at the very top of the website, and then there's the that number. Is the the do we have the zoom bomber? Um, <laughs> um not sure. It's not it's not a Trump ad, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. I had one the other day. Go to Zeppo Station's like website. Or, and and at the top of the like new web. I'm looking for them. You're finding it? Okay, I'm unmuting Michelle. All right, Fine. Michelle, you're Wait. unmuted. Okay. All right. Michelle, so how you're <laughs> Okay, so this is my favorite pan, and I use it for everything. I'm going to turn my heat up. It's my favorite cast iron skillet, and it Did does everything for me. It, like, lives on my stove at all times, and we reheat everything on this. We cook everything on this. It's just something that lives on my stove with my cutting board ready to go. So I'm just going to let this heat up a little bit. Take one of my pre-made crepes, put it down, and then I have my egg. All right. How's everyone doing? Got we your have, crepes we have a if, uh, flip it yet. From Bo. Should I try to flip it? Yes. Okay. It looks fantastic. I think everyone's following along. Bo has a question if we could spotlight him really quick. Hey, hey there, Bo. Hey, Bo. Yeah, I got, my question is, which ingredients most affect the texture of the crepe and how exact do you have to be with the measurements or are there certain ingredients that are more okay to just eyeball? So I would be exact with the measurements and if it's feeling a little bit thick and doesn't roll around in your pan nicely, I would add a little bit more liquid and you can do water or milk. I flipped it. Thanks, Bo. Good job. Woo. Okay. 
So now I'm gonna take my crepe in my cast iron skillet, and I'm gonna crack an egg in the middle. Oh, so it's pretty light right now. Like it doesn't need to be brown at this point. Nope, you're good because you're gonna keep cooking it. Okay. Broke the egg. What happens next? Every step of the way, I'm gonna give a little salt and a little pepper. So this is why I always like to use my offset spatula because when I used it to like kind of flip my crepe. I'm also gonna kind of smear the egg white around. Because what I want to open? happen is that the egg white cooks and the egg yolk stays nice and runny. Got it. Because that's like the sauce. The sauce. Yeah. Can you see that? You see how the whites are cooking? So Michelle, you want to keep that egg yolk intact at this part, right? That's correct. Don't break the yolk. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a little Gruyere down. Because the Gruyere is the glue that sticks it all together. Wait, so on a normal brunch, how many of these do you think were made at Salty Tarts across the state? <laughs> oh. I mean, I mean, we used to sell 150 of these a day. <laughs> That's so awesome. Delicious. So the other really delicious thing is prosciutto, right? Prosciutto. So I'm going to take my prosciutto over the cheese and kind of break it up. I like prosciutto, so I'm going to use two pieces. I'm making so everyone check it. your heat. How's your heat? My cheese is melted, so I'm going to take off and turn it off the heat and have a drink. Hey. <laughs> Salute, Michelle. I feel so, like my, my egg white looks pretty white, like it's not translucent anymore. Yep, so oh. add your cheese. Okay. Michelle, before you turned off your heat, were you cooking at low heat or medium heat? In medium. Okay, got it. Okay, so now the next step is to fold over the crepe. And I'm just gently pressing on the edges because I don't want to break the yolk because the yolk is the sauce. Don't break the yolk. Don't break the yolk. Is this the folding part? Do we fold it now? Yep, time to fold, baby. Time to fold. And this doesn't have to be perfect. If you just want to fold two edges and not three, that's fine. Megan has a question if we could spotlight her really quick. Sure. Megan, where are you? Wait, sorry, unmuting. Um, so, sorry, if you, first of all, I love your kitchen. Your kitchen is super beautiful. Um, and also, if you're adding in other toppings, um, when you add the other toppings, do you add them in a ring, like around the yolk, like what you did with the prosciutto? Yes, I totally would. Okay. So I also have um, smoked salmon and some asparagus that you can add at the at the end with salad. Or if you wanted to make it vegetarian, you could leave out the prosciutto and add whatever you want. Uh, I have some so mushrooms fried up ready to go. It smells so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, I have mushrooms. I forgot to put them in before I folded it. Oh, that would have been delicious. You can saute them and put them on top. I put them on top. Okay, we're ready. Everyone ready? We're going to plate it now. Woohoo! This is the best part. 
Okay. So now, I have my plate. I'm going to put it in the center. I have my fresh arugula. I have my vinaigrette. I made a little homemade vinaigrette. I love making vinaigrette in these little mason jars. I want to come live at your house. <laughs> Just come live at my house, Belinda. Can I sleep, stay on the couch? I'll bring a lot of wine. <laughs> it's a deal. Hey, Michelle, real quick. This is Gabe. Um, if we could get the laptop to uh, to turn the volume down on the laptop, I think we'll yeah. get some better audio. We'll get a little feedback. Thanks. Yeah, just a little feedback. If not, it's okay. Just turn the volume down on the laptop. Thank you. I muted it already. Okay. There we go. So now I have my arugula. I have my vinaigrette. And all I'm going to do is kind of garnish the sides of the galette. And I like to make it tall and dramatic and almost hidden, like a hidden like little surprise party. And then of course, because I'm obsessed with chives and greenery, we sprinkle with chives. Like I said, I have some asparagus here. It might be nice to put in some asparagus to kind of make it real spring-like. And then you can also add smoked salmon if you want to take it to another level. Oh, wait, I need well, Linda, they look great. Does it look okay? It looks great. I don't know oh, if it's a salty tart, but I'm pretty excited. It smells so good. Does anyone else it have any crepes? It smells so good. And look, it's so delicious. It makes its own sauce. Right. Oh. And it has the God. saltiness. Oh, that looks great. Look at that. Amy, nice job, girl. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Oh, that's great. Well done. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we're going to end the show because wow. I need to eat. Th Whoa, that's a good one. Nice. It's a good one. A little toasted, but it's okay. No, it looks beautiful. Nice job. Good job, family. I'm so proud of everyone. <laughs> well, well done, Michelle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy, you guys. I can't wait. So we are going to put up your Venmo information. And if you really loved cooking along or even watching along, I wish you could smell it. It smells so good. You know, please support Michelle. Like many of us, we all could use a little help right now um, in this sort of tough time. So we'll share her Venmo information. And thanks to those who cooked along. And thanks to all of you for being Appreciate here. Appreciate you. But we are not finished with fancy pancake brunch. Not even close. And we just did the crepe galette. And hopefully if you're cooking, you saved a little bit of that crepe batter Thank to then everyone. cook along with Sarah Grinberg. <laughs> but in the middle, I also have a big pot okay. of rice flour coconut concoction because Mark, we're, we're looking at your beauty blender um, thing right now. <laughs> Are you hungry? If I, over, if I cook it. There we go. So I'm going to introduce I'm going to introduce Margaret Pack, who is the chef and owner of an amazing place that I was so lucky to visit before this all happened. It's in Politan Row in the West Loop. It's a place called Thatu, and they specialize in an in Indian cuisine that is not called Carolee's. It's called Carolan. And I'd love to introduce you to her and have her tell us a little bit about this cuisine, which is really special and important. And I'm so excited to discover and have her make this magical thing that I India. ate uh, when we were at their restaurant. Margaret. Hey, Margaret. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Switch down. We're so excited oh. you're here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Because um, I have the other guy on mute. <laughs> um, so welcome. Your kitchen um, looks so fabulous. We're ready to cook with you. Awesome. So we're making up on today. These are fermented rice crepes. And we serve these every day at Thought too. And for those of you who don't know, we already heard it's a Carolyn restaurant. My Can husband you tell knows. us a little bit about that region and what it means? Yes. Yeah, so Kerala... I often call it the California of India because it's on the southwest coast and it's 
beautifully lined with coconut trees and it's just very unique and different in that it's nestled between the Indian Ocean and these beautiful mountain ranges. Um, and that's where uh, my husband, Vinod, is from. We've been married for 15 years and that was my first visit to India. The same time we got married, I met his whole family and I indulged in all the Kerala cuisine and absolutely fell in love with it. Um, so up, um, what we're having today is, um, oh, really quickly, we opened our thought to May of last, last year. And so one thing that's been near and dear to our hearts since opening are making these rice crepes. So that's what we'll jump into. Um, right. Chandra Ram just said, I miss Thatu so much. So do I. <laughs> oh, yay! Hi, Chandra. <laughs> we miss it too. We do. So we've been cooking at home. So, what we're going to do um, is really quickly uh, go through how to set up the batter because the batter is a labor of love. Um, at Thatu, we actually start from grains of rice, soak it for four hours, and then grind it to create this batter. But today, it's taking me back to my pop-up days. So I thought to start off when I was doing pop-ups, um, only 2018, and that's where I would use rice flour. And so I thought, it'd truly taking it back to where it all started and by using rice flour. So Margaret, if we were doing this real legit, you know, grandma in Kerala style, we would be grinding yes. a certain kind of rice to put this all together, right? Right, so we use a short grain rice. Um, it's called um, soda misery rice. It's an inexpensive and it's uh, accessible. I can find it at Restaurant Depot. And so that's what we use. And actually, I, I brought up our older one. This is a rice grinder. I'm sorry, a wow. stone grinder. And so th that's exactly what this is. These are stones that get wet with that soap rice and you're just grinding the hell out of it until it turns into something that looks like Elmer's paste, like Elmer's glue, so it's like a paste. <laughs> and so this is what we do every day, 24 cups plus at Thatu when we're in operation. So this is how we would start the process. And also, Margaret, this is gluten-free, right? Because it's rice flour. So anybody exactly who gluten allergies, this is totally a fine recipe to do. And we're Absolutely. Um, was there a question? No, go ahead. I have a okay. batter, but my I think my yeast didn't didn't like my house. No. Okay. So that's no we're problem. Go over. The two main things that I'm going to go through in terms of setting up the batter are the yeast and the what I call the cook down. So the yeast starter is just a quarter teaspoon of active dry yeast, and then uh, half a teaspoon of sugar but then you do need about a quarter cup of hot water. So I think that might have what might be what happened is that the water just wasn't hot enough. You want your water to be hot enough, but not over 105 degrees. So you just want it to be warm enough to get the active starter, active yeast starter going. So I'm just going to warm up really quickly in my little apachati and I'll show that in just a minute. You can use tap water warm. Wait, how do you say that? <laughs> Uh, Apachati. Apachati. So this is, yes, it's like a mini wok. And I, Vinod, I heard you say you can use tap water warm? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. And it's a warm, like, medium. Is there a great uh, market where we can buy things like that, like the Apachati in Chicago that you know of? I haven't found one in Chicago, but I purchased two of these when you're testing these things out on Amazon. So if you just nice. look up Apachati, A-P-P-A-C-H-A-T-T-I. Cool. So I think it was like maybe 17, it was definitely less than $20. It's very inexpensive. So that's, yeah, warm tap water is fine. The yeast started, this is what kicks off the fermentation process because we're going to ferment the batter overnight. So this is what we're doing. This is what we would have done last night. And so as that's warming up and starting to get frothy, I'm then gonna do what I call the cook down process. I take two tablespoons of the rice flour. 
and I just cook that down with about half of about a cup of water. <laughs> so I'm going to just go through the two parts. I think the yeast starter and then this cook down part are the most important parts to see when you make your batter. Because so this is what is, at this point the yeast should have been bubbling, right? Mine didn't. Um, so it, didn't bubble. it takes about eight to ten minutes to bubble. Okay. If it's alive. <laughs> right. To make sure it's alive. Um, I, and I'm wondering if also it just either got too hot or not hot enough. Yeah. It has to get to that warm temperature. But um, in my early days, I would just scorch the heck out of the water. So you got to like be careful, be mindful of that. But I think the main thing is you can do just like warm water from the from the tap. Um, but those are the two parts. The as the yeast starts going and have this cooking down, it's going to turn into like a little roux. I'll just uh, keep stirring this. But the idea is to have this warm cooked rice. There are different ways that you could do this. There are variations that people use like leftover rice the night before. So now this whole thing goes into either the Instapot yogurt setting or into, I put it into my oven at the lowest at the night, right? Shoot, my headset just popped out, but were you asking where does this go? Linda, what was the question again? Oh, so we so after we all that, it goes into mm -hmm. yeah. just an oven with the light on for overnight. Or you can you said in the recipe you can put it into an instant pot at the yogurt setting. Right? Uh, you're having this correct. If this cook down process. Yep. Hardcore consistency needs to thicken. And these take still thicken a bit more. Yeah. And then you would also add the coconut milk, this frothy active dry yeast starter, the remainder of the rice flour, and then about a cup and a half more of water. Awesome. So good. Good. And then we're ready to cook. <laughs> no, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's exactly this bowl is what can go into your oven. So the next morning, this morning, this is what I did use an Instapot. And that was a big learning just for consistency that I found in doing pop-ups and um, at our, uh, well, this is actually what we use every day at Batu. We use three, three of these. And in the morning, you add sugar to, to continue the fermentation, fermentation process, <laughs> a little salt, and it looks like this. So for those of us who have been like starting our sourdough starters and sourdough bread, you definitely see those bubbles. No the bubbles are good. Exactly. Okay. And it's a very runny consistency. So this is probably the part, we could have like a whole hour long class on this. Um, I think that what's, it, it takes some practice. You, can, you have your sacrificial alpum the first one where you test things out, and for the heat of your pan. So it, it definitely takes practice for the batter and the making of this, but that's what makes it fun. Fun. No, okay. it's definitely fun. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the apachati. Um, it's like a mini wok. It is thin. Um, the main, the important thing is that you have a non-stick pan that has a lid. So that is the most important part because we're not going to add any oil because there's natural oils from the coconut milk. So I am waiting for this to warm up. And while I'm waiting for it to warm up, I like to have like a rubber spatula, but also a towel because I will want this to wipe down the condensation as this is cooking. Okay. 
And Margaret, is this so, considered is this considered a difficult thing to make in the sort of compendium of this cuisine, or is this is this like one of those things where your grandmother's really good at it, and then she has to teach you how to do it? <laughs> yes, this is definitely uh, takes takes time to learn, but once you once you learn, it's it's an easy thing to do. <laughs> um, this is typically a breakfast food. We'd have it with an egg curry or a simple. Just um, coconut milk, fresh coconut milk would be ideal. Um, we have a quick question from Bailey, if we can spotlight her. Hey, Bailey. Yeah, hi, Bailey. Hi. Hi, guys. Um, how hot is your pan? I have it over medium heat right now. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, so medium heat. Uh, okay. You don't want it to be scorching hot. You want to be able to like hold up your hand, like, maybe like a few inches above so you can feel the heat. Um, but do test out your sacrificial upum because every pan will be different. Um, but I'd say err on the, on the medium heat. Um, I do like throw a little bit of water just to make sure that it's not boiling off and overly hot. So I tend to go over. Um, but as you make your upum, uh, I do about half a cup per upum. And so you'll know, yep. You can hear the sizzle. That's a good sign of that, that it's hot enough. And then you'll want to slowly just rotate that, like, to cover it, to get the edges. So, and then cover it immediately. <laughs> oh, we can cover it. Yes. This is the case where we will be only cooking one side. So one-sided rice crepe. So this will be in there for about a couple of minutes. We'll check on it. But this is a time where you let it truly uh, come to life and we'll um, wait for it to steam within there. Will you and also tell us kind of what's going on with your business right now and your staff and that kind of stuff and how this group can help? Sure. So um, yes, sadly, we did have to furlough our team. We did close um, March 15th, uh, the Monday before St. Patrick's Day. Um, and uh, during this time, our, uh, we had our team happy hour, so we got in touch with everybody. Um, everyone's healthy, and we are planning on doing a couple of things. Um, we are in the works of doing a takeout Tuesday um, with where I started in Bridgeport. I was at Kimsky when I started during my pop-ups. Um, so we'll be doing a takeout event there. That'll be coming up soon. Um, uh, but it's been a, an amazing uh, time between, it's only been like what, four weeks, but it, it's, we've just received so much love and so many messages from all of our fans and our, our customers. Um, it's, uh, I think it's been about two minutes. So I'm gonna take a quick peek at this. <laughs> And I have a towel ready because it will have con condensed on top. Wow. It doesn't, it might look like Mars, <laughs> but that's all rice, coconut milk, salt, after rice and sugar. That's all it is. I am going to let it. Whoa. I did it. Maybe. We'll see. Ooh, let's see. Let's see, B. I mean, it's bubbly. Yes, it is. Ooh, put the lid back on. Yeah, that's going. That looks like Mars, B. You're doing it. Okay. Nice. Um, the, I'm still waiting for the edges to crisp. And so that's where um, the, the ingredients can matter. Like generally speaking, if you like yours crust like crispier, you can add more sugar to get more browning on the sides. Love it. Hey, we have another super expert. Chandra is here. Chandra, like oh my gosh, you're like super Instapot and Indian cuisine super duper guru. Like, what should we know about these things as we embark to this journey of learning about this cuisine? I mean, I, th I think it's like you have to just jump in and do it and you have to, you know, just don't be afraid to, you know, to try making those. Like, I feel, I always feel really nervous trying to make up them because it's not something I grew up with, but 
I make dosa because my family is from basically South India, but on the East Coast. So it's, you know, they're very similar. They're kind of savory pancakes. And, um, you know, it's just like, I think the cooking videos really help. I think you can, you can get like a, you know, a good basic, um, set up of spices, get some, some cumin, some coriander, some cardamom, um, some Kashmiri chili powder, which is yes. much, much less spicy than anything. It looks like cayenne, but it's like a fraction of the heat. And just start, you know, always make sure you toast your spices. Indians get like really weird if you do raw spices um but um just start cooking things you know like saute some onions throw you know throw a few pinches of spices in there add some uh some potatoes some leftover cooked potatoes and then you'll have like potato onion fry and that's the type of thing we have extra dosa butter at home we you know we make the dosa, which is very similar uh, in terms of technique as to what Margaret's doing. And, um, and then we fold like potatoes, and onions, maybe some chilies, maybe some, some herbs in there. And um, it's totally great. So yeah. Okay, I think I'm like, movement it's, here. I'm so glad Margaret's talking about doing a pop-up because I am having serious tattoo uh, um, <laughs> memories right now. I'm having withdrawal. So. <laughs> oh. We miss you guys. <laughs> All right, Margaret. So we're ready. Let's see it. Oh, ready? yes. Right. That's so it. This is our first album. Yes. Oh, my God. Got another? That doesn't look sacrificial to me. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I think it's ready to go. So, what do so. you You had two options for what to do with this. So, egg curry was one option. And then, yes. the second kind of easy option. This is a simple coconut milk sweetened. So I do like a one to one ratio of coconut milk and water and then a little bit of sugar. And so I just pour it on top. <laughs> like I just go for it. <laughs> I like it extra sweet. So sometimes I do add a little extra sugar or like sugar in the raw if you want that sugar sweetness. Um, but this is sometimes what I'll have for breakfast. Oh, yum. Mine looks good and too. Do we get any? Yeah, let's see. Do we get upland successes? I mean, it's almost done, I think. Is it supposed to be brown or no? Yes. Okay. That's great. Good. Then I'm going to let mine ride for a minute. <laughs> That's so awesome. Margaret, thank you so much for sharing that. I know that you wanted to thank do you. a curry, and I'm kind of obsessed with fancy pancakes right now, so I know <laughs> it's really complicated. And to everyone, oh, Margaret has for the team at Thought to a virtual tip jar, so all support is much appreciated. And we can't wait to get back and have your food as soon as possible. But well, you know, pop up too. yeah, we do have yeah. one more fancy pancake to go. It is not over. <laughs> <laughs> and so Sarah Grunberg is here, and I'm so thrilled. She was here last week, too. And frankly, Sarah, if you want to come every week, I love cooking with you. It's so much fun. So as everyone knows, Sarah's chef partner at Monteverde, and it's one of the toughest to get into restaurants here in Chicago. And I know this girl is also Zooming, like, seven days a week right now so we're so excited that you're here for our zoom what are we gonna do sarah okay well thank you so much belinda and it's so great to see everyone again i was inspired by the theme today of crepes um and you know we're doing the trainings with our team and we just started training tuscany and i fell in love and i kind of remembered this dish called crispelle alla fiorentina which is a florentine style crepes and so thank you chef michelle for your recipe it was amazing and um, i just wanted to share a kind of a quick easy you could probably uh, do this as a quick dinner or a side dish uh in the future with your crepes so thank you <laughs> remember you can use the same batter used for michelle's crepe for sarah's crepe as well yes yes and um <laughs> We're looking for about 12 crepes. So I really found that your pan, like I made kind of giant crepes. So <laughs> um, if you got to double the batch to make enough to feed however many you want to feed, then go ahead and feel free. It's, it's all about fun cooking. And I think someone did a question earlier, like, can you eyeball it? And I think, you know, 
you want to use the measurements, but sometimes you might want to add a little bit more flour, a little bit more liquid, depending on how thick you want the crepes. All right, so Tuscan kale. This kale is like my most favorite delicious kale. Um, get it at Whole Foods, at Jewel, Mariano's, all the different grocery stores. Uh, I think it has such a flavor. Uh, you're gonna wilt this kale down with some butter and onions until it's nice and soft. And then we're just gonna take it and mix it into ricotta. Uh, ricotta, my favorite cheese for filling into different things. This is ricotta and Parmigiano Reggiano. Mm. And this could be a pasta filling too. If you wanted to make ravioli, this would be a great uh, recipe for that also. I have some crepes here. And um, I just found kind of the, you know, mine got a little dark. And, you know, I don't know if Michelle wants to, to communicate, uh, kind of go with me on this, but I guess Catherine Medici maybe trained the French on how to make crepes, but I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, Sarah, I don't think we have any French chefs here, so go for it. Go with that. <laughs> well, I, I will say that the, the French have definitely, uh, you know, taken the crepes to the next level, of course. But when we're talking crispelle, crispelle just means crepe, and this is the Italian version. So I'm going to take my filling and just like a schmear inside, half of the way. And then we're going to fold this other half. Can y'all see this? Yeah. Yeah, looks great. So we're gonna fold and press, and then do another fold. So we have these like beautiful little triangles. All right, and then I'm gonna come here, and I have like a lake crusade or a different kind of uh, a nine by thirteen will work, or any kind of baking dish. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil, your favorite marinara sauce. Yes, even at home, I I use a homemade marinara sauce or a store-bought marinara sauce whenever I need to do something in a pinch. Yeah. So the key here is that I don't want too much sauce. So I have two cups. I'm reserving one cup for the top, one cup in the bottom. And then you just want to kind of nestle these crepes in. And what's beautiful about this is you can do this ahead of time for your virtual dinner party or for dinner or once this is all over we can have dinner parties again. Oh, I miss that. Oh my I know. Gosh. Me too. Me too. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this so, could be like your whole brunch dining room everyone in here. We would all be you know toasting each other from table to table. Be so hundred percent. So I'm gonna say smear. young up like next level. I'm gonna smear this kind of pomodoro yes. sauce and then a good amount of Parmigiano Reggiano. You could use Grana Padano. I maybe wouldn't use Pecorino Romano. I think it might be a little too salty. We're gonna then put this right in the oven and I have one magic oh. television to pull out. Magic! <laughs> TV magic. I made a little baby one for Jamie and I to enjoy now. <laughs> just some parsley on top. And a nice glug of extra virgin olive oil. Yum! Ooh. This is like the next best version of lasagna. I'm telling you. I had forgotten about this recipe. I had forgotten about crispelle, but they're amazing and oh so delicious. Gosh. And you could have fun with all the fillings. Wow, so it's like so fast, right? Once you make all the crepes, this is like a super easy assembly, yes. right, Sarah? It oh is, and I think gosh. it's great for kids too. Like every, I mean, all, we all love a good comfort food dish, and you could put sausage in the filling. You could put prosciutto. You know, you could really have fun with this vegetarian. Um, when I was in Italy, I had it with nettles, with stinging nettles, mm. and I just hope we can get open again at Monteverde to put a stinging nettle version of this on before spring is over. Hey, yeah. Sarah, do you have any gluten-free pastas at the restaurant, or do you? Is that Yes, yeah, so we um, have a whole gluten-free menu. It's called our Sinza menu, meaning without gluten. And uh, we actually use a, a pasta made from Tuscany called Caponi. It's a brown rice and corn flour rigatoni. Uh, we just found that that works the best and has the best flavor. You know, if we tried to do it in our pasta feed show, there's so much wheat flour up there. It would be hard to make it no gluten and yeah. then go back to making pasta. But um, we have all, um, most of our pastas are available gluten-free. Um, so yeah, 
super fun. And we're hoping to do some to go soon. So stay, stay tuned. <laughs> well, I need to go. I'm just going to curbside pick up at your place. I mean, I'll be there once this is over. <laughs> I'm going to bring them to you. So don't worry. A question for you, Sarah, from Bailey, if you could spotlight her. Hey, Bailey, there, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Yes, Sarah, I was wondering, what is your go-to marinara sauce that we can buy at a store? Oh, man. All right. I am... <laughs> I'm a Rayos girl. Oh yeah, I have I love, too. I love Rayos for like a quick like I need something, but I really should make my own and get it jarred up. So <laughs> stay tuned. Maybe retail Monteverde retail sauce. Sarah, we can just <laughs> but, print you up a sticker and put it on top of that. No one will know. <laughs> what I love about Rayos is there's enough olive oil in it to where it really tastes like I think how I would make. Uh, pasta sauce. Oh, that was amazing. Wait, so what is the bake time on, on that? So that's like oh. fast, this whole dish, right? Yeah, so the bake time was 375 degrees for 25 minutes. Oh my God. And um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this big one kind of going for later. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have leftovers, Belinda. I'll bring you some. <laughs> is it going to be gin martinis? Where's Jamie? Jamie, what are you guys going to drink yeah. with that what situation? Yum. Hey. Hi, <laughs> everyone. This is Jamie. Hey, Jamie. He's also the managing partner of Monteverde, and uh, I think one of the greatest maitre d's on earth. Also, he has many <laughs> skills, but that one I think is really superb. But thank you. What are you gonna, what are you gonna drink with that situation? Oh man, maybe some uh, Chianti tonight. Ooh, Tuscany that's, all the way. I that's the move. I love it. <laughs> That's so fun. Well, everyone, this recipe is available. It's posted in the chats. There's also a link to it in Ooh. your registration form. So Yum. if you want to have oh, a little fun to verity magic. Three, you get a, a square checked off in the bingo card if anyone made all three or just any ones you made. I know. <laughs> You can check it. It's going to take a little time. I'm going to make them all three. I made two so far. <laughs> There's some magnums on the line, though. I got some magnums of wine for someone who finishes this bingo and posts it. But we do have another moment that we want to share today. And sorry we're running a little late, but thank you for hanging in there. I love these two, and I think they're so amazing. But Matt, do you want to intro our next guest? Absolutely. So we have... Darcy uh, and Kate, Darcy Usich and Kate Hayes, the founders of Happy Cabbage here with us today. And we're so happy to have you. They're going to walk us through some So the guy who's hosting it is the guy with his. Uh, first of all, Darcy and Kate, what does Happy Cabbage mean? What's the meaning behind Oh, I might have muted them. I'm so sorry. You have to unmute yourselves. You got it, Darcy. Got it. Okay. Oh. Hi. Thanks so much for having us, guys. We're excited to be here. And so hungry after so all those crepes. <laughs> like, <laughs> they look amazing. Um, Matthew, you asked for happy cabbage men? Yes, please. I'm so interested. Oh, yeah. So we actually came across this phrase. It's from the 1920s or 30s, and it means a little bit of extra money. So... You pay all your bills, you have a little happy cabbage to spend on wine or shoes or the gifts that we're about to show you. So we thought it was a fun way to tie in, having a little bit of extra for fun. Absolutely. What kind of gifts have you been delivering during the shelter in place? We have been delivering this is different gifts. Yeah, so I mean, when we were talking to Belinda about this, it's really just highlighting that life has been going on. Babies are still being born, engagements are still happening, new homes are being purchased, and, and people still want to celebrate and share in that experience with their friends and family. Um, we have also been doing a lot of custom gifts for those on our front lines, our doctors, our mm -hmm. nurses, um, our restaurant workers that are delivering food to us. Um, and that has been really special to share in that experience. I, I told Belinda during our production run, I did a delivery this week to a woman who hadn't seen anyone in three weeks. And, and when I handed her our gift, she just started crying. And then I started crying. We were all crying <laughs> on the street. But, you know, I think it's just to say that, you know, we can still reach out to one another and we can still help um, our community, our friends, our family, and those close to us to celebrate um, the, the little moments, no matter how big or small. I think you, have, you still have to have beauty, right? It's like kind of a dark and challenging time. And, you know, that's why we're all kind of stalking the Instagram accounts that are so beautiful like yours and wanting to find moments and to share moments with our friends. 
So I know you're going to show us some of the beautiful things that you guys have been putting together yeah. for people, and I can't wait to see them. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned we're, we're new moms. So I have a 20-month-old, and Darcy has a three-month-old. Yes. Uh, incredible. And, and a lot of times when, you know, you're a new mom, it's all about the baby, right? And mm -hmm. that's wonderful, and they're adorable, and we love them. <laughs> Um, but we really felt um, pulled to have a new mom gift. So Darcy's going to talk about that. Yeah, this one has, you know, a nice relaxing eye mask, a sits bath if you're a new mom. It's a if you know, you know kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Brave New Mama, which is a beautiful book that has really inspiring poems for new moms. Um, some aromatherapy oil and inhalers and beautiful things to keep you calm when you're, when you're super busy with that new little one. And, you know, when you're... Buying gifts from us, you're also supporting the hundreds, if not more, partners and small businesses that we mm -hmm. are purchasing our product from. All of our product is a small business, and we've really, really worked very hard at finding natural products, women-owned businesses, mm -hmm. um, people that are akin to us. And, and so I think that's pretty cool when you're purchasing a gift from us, like this one, which we're so excited about. Um, we did these wine totes. Um, this will be on our site too soon. Um, we have one that says vino as well, but we can do, you know, any, pick your liquor. Um, maybe we'll ask Miss Frankie for some hot tips <laughs> of what we can include in here. Um, but we have these hand chain stitch, which is like the coolest thing by Ann Leishman here in Chicago. She's been cranking out beautiful pieces. Um, so again, this is a, a really fun one that you can send someone just because or for Mother's Day. Guys, this is not a time to skimp on Mother's Day. No. It's been a real long run for these moms. Um, <laughs> have been and moms. you guys are doing, like, you're doing deliveries yourselves and, like, everything. I mean, this is all small business ethos, right? I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a hustle, for sure. And, and I think, also, it's just elevating every day. You know, don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. If, you know, your, your wife or your partner or your friend is a shower person, don't try and send them a whole bath bomb, you know? Send them a really <laughs> nice bath scrub that they can use in the shower. We don't have to, like, work outside the box here. Um, for all of our foodies, like send them a new cutting board. Send them. <gasps> I love that. That's like a puzzle yeah. cutting board. That's so cool. Uh, these are custom made for us. Um, it's a three in one. It's the puzzle piece cutting board. So you can chop up, take this part off, dump it in for your crepe. We love these. They're also dishwasher safe. They're so great. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, and it doesn't have to be through us. If you finish a puzzle, take it over to your neighbor to use mm -hmm. or. Um, as Darcy said, pick some daffodils from their yard. I love that you said that, Kate, because I feel like, you know, everybody's saying the way to support our restaurant friends and stuff is to do delivery. And I'm like, oh, I can't really afford to do the delivery every single day. But yeah. I think there's probably some other things that I can do. And the same with the gifting. Maybe um, you guys have a couple ideas for, you know, other yeah. ways to gift if, you know, like resources are slightly limited. I mean, I'm going to go steal daffodils now. You <laughs> you. There's plenty downtown. I drove down there the other day. Don't tell me. <laughs> yeah. um, we were thinking of other fun things that were either cheap or free. We, in our, a lot of our baskets, we'll put postcards. Um, mail, snail mail, especially we want to support the U.S. Postal Service as much as we can right now. Um, but putting something in the mail to someone you love is always a really, really great idea. Um, we also include custom playlists in a lot of our baskets. That's so cool. That is cool. Someone who loved a good cassette mixtape or <laughs> CD back in the day. It's so nice to put a Spotify playlist together for someone to celebrate a birthday, to just some nostalgia. Mine would have a lot of little Kim. I don't know about yours. <laughs> <laughs> or like if, you know, you had a really anticipated vacation that you were going to take make a playlist that's akin mm -hmm. to that culture that you were going to go celebrate make a dish from there um we also are loving all the free virtual tours you guys the yes. Bat museum the louvre shed aquarium shout out to our friend shannon that works there um they are doing so much fun stuff to bring you know the shed home for kids for families we also just like really are digging all these zooms but also mm -hmm. be intentional about it it was my husband's birthday this week and i felt so sad that we couldn't celebrate with his friends but i sent three of them a bottle of cobalt whiskey from here in chicago and i set up the zoom and i, I kind of surprised him with it but oh. um you know it's something they could all share in together mm -hmm. and it was friends that he doesn't see very often and so you know they ended up spending two and a half hours just chatting it up 
And um, so it, it always doesn't have to be, you know, a car parade in front of their house or, you know, this huge expensive gift. I think a lot of it is we get caught up in making it special and sometimes it's just about the follow through. Yeah. Um, and just doing something, you know, make that batch cocktail that we learned this morning and drop yeah. it off for your sister or, um, you know, make some of those amazing crepes and, and, and share them with your neighbors. I love it. Thank you for sharing all those tips. And you guys are also supporting a really great organization called the Family Independence Initiative. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So all of the, the proceeds from our gifts since the, since COVID-19, so since mid-March, a portion of those proceeds have gone to the Family Independence Initiative Chicago version. So it's an emergency fund for people who have lost their jobs and this fund will help them supplement wages um, during these tough times. So it is relevant in other cities as well. So you can support it for Boston, Atlanta, New York. Pretty much every major metro has a version mm -hmm. of it. I love it. So great. Thank you so much for sharing all of that beauty. I tell you every time I look at your feeds. It just, it, it makes my day a little better. So thank you, thank you, thank you for, for bringing all of that beauty to so many people. <laughs> it's so awesome. So Matthew, what an, what there. A, what a, <laughs> that was fantastic. I learned so much. Um, I can't wait to start making these crepes. I'm still sipping on my P&T that Ms. Frankie, I think it's my <laughs> second or third one actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's uh let's talk a little bit about next week miss frankie first of all this is amazing i think i prefer the pnt a little more than the the second one but they're both fantastic they're both so good so nicely balanced and everything so next week we're doing dim sum and then some and the theme is inspired by adrian low uh because she thought it would be really fun well i might have goaded her into it but i thought it'd be really fun to make dumplings with adrian and then i reached out to my friends who i love so much mclean and mary allison from denver who have a bunch of really super cool places so McLean, do you have some ideas about what you're gonna share with us? You're unmuted, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, how are you? Hi. Hi yeah. Thank you so much for hosting today. It was super fun. Um, I'm enjoying my crepes right now. Um, nice, well done. I've I've really just been you know enjoying so much of obviously all the guests and everyone you've had involved, but just kind of the theme of everyone's brought something really fun for brunch to the table with like fortified wines and low ABV and that kind of side of things. So, you know, I think last week we saw sake this week, you've got Pinot de Chiron, one of my personal favorites. Uh, we've got a French restaurant out in Denver and we, we pour a ton of Pinot de Chiron. So um, this is, this was right at home for me today. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, hopefully for next week, um, especially seeing, you know, knowing, knowing that we've got fat rice, we'll, we'll probably, um, still stick with something low ABV, probably a fortified wine of sorts. Um, and I, I'm, I'm leaning more towards something Madeira-esque, um, uh, something like that. Uh, coastal, fortified, or, or oxidative, um, you know, we, we might go Rancio, but, or, or talk about the difference between the two maybe. So um, I, I'm really looking forward to kind of just being able to sip some fortified wines with you all day. And, um, and there might be some champagne showing up too, you never know. Wow. Well, you know how to get to me. That's so uh, awesome. Yeah. We can't wait to see you next week. I can't wait to be here with y'all. Thank you so and much. And then Nina, you're on the spot. So Nina was a guest in our very first week of all of this. And I don't know if anybody follows her Instagram feed, but you should, because this girl is like a rockin' baker and her whole family is kind of in the baking game. So Nina, what are you thinking for next week? I am so excited. Thank you for having me back. Um, we've done so many awesome savory items from pasta to pancakes to all of the different kinds of eggs. So I think probably something in the baking realm, maybe cookies, brownies. I don't know. We'll check. Something delicious. I'm sure. <laughs> Good. So we're going to have a ton of really fun people and we hope that you'll keep coming back and maybe even post pandemic. I don't know. I'm loving not wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> Did I walk back there? Did anyone see? Oh, I, I tried really hard not to walk that direction so that nobody would notice that I wasn't wearing pants. But it's so fun for all of us to have so many fun friends from near and far. So we're all going to be here every Sunday for the near future. And I'm super excited about Amy Cofield because she is a super... No? 
And you know what we haven't done together? We haven't had a voice lesson or sung, sang, sung, carried a tune. So Amy, will you tell us a little bit about yourself and what's gonna happen next week? Yeah, so I'm, first of all, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for this whole event. I loved making my cups. Um, so I am an opera singer and classical singer, concert singer, and voice teacher. And um, of course, as you know, Broadway shut down and pretty much all of us who are freelance musicians lost a whole lot of work. I had a major opera role that I was to perform next month and um, several concerts. So it's been, it's been a challenge, but um, everybody's getting creative about sharing online. So um, Belinda asked if I would share some of my artistry with you. And so next week I will sing something gonna for sing you. For us. I'm gonna sing for you. And we're gonna sing with her. Ooh. And then, yes, I don't know how that works with all the muting and unmuting, but we're gonna do a, a thing together too. And I'll talk with you a little bit more about how, um, how the type of people who come to me for voice lessons and how we're making it work online now. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to take part in this. So Ed, Ed, are you still here? Cause Ed also, I didn't realize it's kind of in the music business too. Ed, so maybe you're going to sing also cause you're a baritone, right? <laughs> anyway. I love spotlighting people putting them on the spot. So entertaining. <laughs> anyway, it was such a delight to hang out with you. I think I also have to pour myself a little more Pinot de Chiron. I mean, did everybody already finish their pre-determined beverages for today? <laughs> yeah. You can keep oh drinking. You know, pour it a little more. Low ABD, you can keep drinking. Good. Listen, this after party has in the past gone on for a couple hours. So wow. everybody is welcome to hang out. But I just wanted to raise a toast um to all of our amazing guests you can see their images here and i just love spending these sundays with you i am grateful that you are here to help me not drink alone because that's really my own rule i'll drink anything eat anything but i won't drink alone and i think that this is a really great way to spend some time together and try to make the day a little brighter so we will see you Next week. Cheers. 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 It's a family initiative. Let's let's make sure we show them all love for donating their time and their wisdom and knowledge to all us. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. And yeah, the the after party starts right now. <laughs> <laughs>